Hi and welcome to a new Paragon Guide. This time we focus on the heavily requested Twin Blast. Twin Blast has had a rocky history, but he finally finds his place here on Monolith with his rework. To understand Twin Blast, let's quickly cover his abilities, and no, I'm not going to tell you what they do and then just move on. I'm actually going to discuss their real purposes. Firstly, the grenade, which has free charges for some solid AoE burst, gives you some very powerful damage in the early game, even though it can be expensive mana-wise. This can really help you clear jungle camps because of that awesome AoE, and for the same reason, it can help you defend or push lanes as well. But best of all, it's a long range harass that you can use to attack people while they're under the tower, even in the early game. You can just throw these things from far and maybe even kill someone when they're trying to hide behind their tower. I've used this ability to kill many stealth Kalaris and it's awesome. Secondly, the dash. This comes across as an embarrassingly bad ability at first, like that, that dash if you're using it for your gap closing or escape, it's just not going to do much. It barely moves you, but its primary function is not that of chasing, but it actually comes down to dodging damage. You can use it to jump out of a Murdoch ult, dodge a rampage stun, jump out of a steel ultimate, and so on. Or you can get really clever with it and jump off a ledge, then use the dash to get back to the ledge. Your chaser might just fall down and you'll leave them in your dust. So it has its uses. Third, triple shot. Super straightforward, shoot free shots very quickly, and this works with lifesteal and critical hits, so this ability is awesome and one of your best ways to burst damage someone. You definitely want to level this as your priority when you can't level the ultimate. And finally, the ultimate itself. People really struggle to aim this one, and yes, it takes practice. Try to look at it as a burst spell that you're going to need to channel into someone for good damage. But you can actually normally do more damage with triple shot and basic attacks, which is also easier to hit at the same time. So I find myself using this ultimate mainly for the insane range that it has. You can kill someone who's trying to escape who's just out of your normal attack range, or harass someone who's under a tower. You can use it from high up to deal damage from a safe location, or set up a kill by harassing someone just before a fight, low their health. It has a lot of uses and generally is really useful. You just have to not look at it as a way to deal more damage than your basics because that's not the case. That does it for the abilities. Let's move into the build. Today I'm showcasing a build that originally came from Undead Pilot of Team Carbon, a competitive carry player. Okay, so here's the build. Something you'll notice is that we're not running health potion, we're running bump juice. Bump juice gives you 85 health instantly, whereas health potion gives you 90 over 15 seconds. So yes, health bot does give you more health, but the bump juice gives it instantly and it's only a tiny bit less. This is really useful for people with smaller health pools like a carry. You'll notice that we're not running any tokens in the deck and that's because we're running Madstone Gem. Madstone Gem gives you the same value of two tokens, which is great because it only takes up one slot. Given that the build is based around crit, we're running Red Eye Nitro to give us the attack speed for the build, which will also give us more crit, a bunch of cheap micro nukes and a cheap Sage's Ward to give us early game damage. But do note we have a brand of the Iron Eater, which yes, is more crit, but more than anything, it's free lesser drains and a little bit of inbuilt lifesteal as well. If you can finish this fairly early, after you finish your micro nukes, you'll have solid, reliable lifesteal in that mid game, which then allows you to solo kill raptors, which is unbelievably useful. And maybe you can even solo prime too. At some point, we're going to replace that brand of the Iron Eater for the more expensive version, of course, and these micro nukes are going to be replaced out for Impact Hammer and the more expensive micro nuke. You can't be running a crit build without some kind of crit bonus. It's so fucking important. We go with Blast Harness in this case because, well, it's going to give us more attack speed, which we don't have too much of in the build. That's where we're going to get it from. As far as this build is concerned, it's really straightforward. You build the Bump Juice and a Madstone Gem, and then you build your cheap micro nukes, your cheap ward, and your cheap brand of Iron Eater. At that point, it's time to pick up Blink Charm unless you didn't already pick it up earlier because you needed it and finish a Blast Harness to give yourself that huge crit bonus. From there, you just replace your cheap stuff. Get rid of your cheap brand for the more expensive one, get rid of a Micro Nuke for a more expensive one, get rid of a Micro Nuke for the uh, Impact Hammer and you're all good. Really reliable, solid build and I've been loving using this for a while now. Let's get to something obvious for carry players. Something that every carry player does is last hitting. To begin with, remind yourself that if you can hit every last hit, you'll be so far ahead of everyone else every game and you'll be able to carry a lot of the time. If you find yourself missing a last hit that you should have hit, don't tell yourself that it doesn't matter and it's okay. Treat it as what it is, a mistake. This matters more and more each time you miss a last hit. It just compounds. It's something you can't be doing in the early game. 
a carry is weakest in the early game, so you need to gain that CP as fast as possible to have relevant damage. And to do that, you need to last hit. If you start to focus more on missing less and less last hits, and giving it more meaning in your head when you actually hit one as well, you'll find yourself with a lot more CP in each game. The more you practice this, the better you will get out, of course, but going in with the right mentality is the key here and what I'm trying to put across. Remember to consider this, it's about last hitting. Not hitting minions with basics until they die, but only ever attacking a minion when it's about to die, when you shooting it will cause the killing blow. If you can do this, you won't push the lane. And if you rush to clear a wave by just hitting them, hitting them, hitting them, then you'll push the lane to the enemy tower, which then gives them more safety because they're at their tower, and makes you more vulnerable to ganks because you're further from your tower. Remember, it is called last hitting, not hit it until it dies. Moving on into your next extremely important focus, we're talking about aim. Aim is a straightforward thing. If you actually land your shots most of the time, you'll already be very impactful as a carry. To do this, you'll need to learn to lead your shots, understand hitboxes, and generally be able to hit players who are trying to dodge your attacks. It's all key. Leading shots comes up constantly. If a player moves past you at certain angles, you'll have to lead the shot and shoot in front of them where they're about to be, not where they actually are, to land the hit. Practice makes perfect on this one. Hitboxes are the space that surrounds a character. If an attack lands there, the character takes damage. Many characters have larger or smaller boxes, and generally the bigger the enemy, the easier it's going to be to hit them, right? Well, when we get to smaller characters like Decker or Kalari or even Twinblast himself, those hitboxes get pretty small. So aim for the center mass, that's the biggest hitbox area, to give yourself the best chance of actually hitting. Aim is extremely important, but it's actually not the most impactful or important trait of a good carry player. Positioning. The most important part of a carry in a team fight is definitely their positioning. If you can avoid big ultimates or just abilities such as Steel Ult or Rampage Rocks, you'll be able to keep putting out damage and never be pressured too hard. Between aim and positioning, I definitely value positioning to be more important. If someone with bad aim but good positioning plays carry, sure you can miss kills here or there, but this carry player who's good at positioning will be alive much more, which will result in more assists and, of course, more time to actually farm. A carry with good aim but bad positioning can be great in 1v1s, but a carry is meant to carry the late game and carries the most impactful role in the late game teamfights thanks to their huge consistent damage. It's all well and good if you can actually hit those shots, but what's it matter if you're dead because you weren't in the right spot and you got hit by the ult and then burst down? That's what's going to happen if you're out of position. You can't hit the shots when you're dead, right? Here's a couple of examples of good positioning in teamfights. So we're pushing the middle in here, but at the end of the game here, we got Prime. And I noticed the Chimera is on the right, so I back up, causing me to avoid the Steel Ult, which will lead into a Wombo Combo from Murdoch Ult, which doesn't hit me either. And I push myself to the left side away from the Chimera, so he goes on another target, which isn't me, leading me to kill him really easily. Gideon initiates, and Ult's just behind me, so I walk straight through it to have my little 1v1 pressure on the Howitzer, who doesn't have his his uh, ult anymore and it's an easy kill. At that point, I'm separated from my team, which is unfortunate, but think about it this way. I'm completely behind the enemy, giving me the easiest kill on the carry who is not aware that I'm even there. Steel's really low. He's already used everything, so he's an easy pickup. And then Gideon also doesn't have his ult, not that he could do much anyway, because I'm full health with Prime and Lifesteal, so it's over. And it all came from that attack from behind. Here's a clip from the stream where I'm playing Murdoch this time. As you can see, I'm using the high ground of the Prime Pit to shoot down at the enemy carry, tagging him once or twice. We pick up a quick Quick kill there on steel and then pick up another kill on a gadget really quick. Staying at a distance from Severog, he starts pressuring me and I knock him straight back into my team and back up more. Using that height advantage again, I keep hitting him without losing any time, keeping on him. Then I jump to land myself specifically in the spot where I can double or land the double kill and that is indeed four kills to me. That's a quad kill, all thanks to positioning and basically using that prime pit wall constantly. We secure prime, they try to steal it and then we get the pentakill which was fantastic. It was one of my first pentakills in Monolith. So there you go, positioning. Finding a balance between the two main aspects of carry is critical. If you can get both aim and positioning to a good level, you will be a menace. So shoot for that. Now we move to early, mid, and late game priorities as a carry. You'll need a clear plan in mind for each phase of the game. 
The two main strats in Monolith currently for carry in the early game are early game farm or early game pressure. You can farm safely by freezing the lane and using the gold buff to increase your CP gain slightly. A good tip is actually to take the gold buff when your lane is pushed up and unsafe to farm and then use the gold to farm jungle. But remember, you have to consider what your jungler is doing before you do that. You don't want to take farm that he needs. If the jungler is invading the enemy jungle, ganking or farming the other side, then sure, it's fine for you to do, but don't be doing it constantly when he needs it. Meanwhile, the other way to approach the early game is to create a huge early game pressure. Seen and used by competitive teams like Nexus or Rat Pack, you can take the right lane's tower by just three minutes and then rotate to the left lane with your support to kill the next tier one by seven minutes which can be a huge CP lead that you're going to get, allowing you to be more aggressive in the mid game while you're still ahead. However, this strat does require good team play from most or everyone on your team. So everyone being on board to do it is very important. And that's not always possible in solo queue, right? Mid game can be split into two major choices too. Way up if you can get away with farming hard and trusting your team to not take fights they're not going to win without you. Or you'll maybe need to be rotating to be part of those important fights where you specifically get the last hit on the kills to get that all important CP. Currently, Monolith definitely rewards the carry who can get early game kills more than the carry who can sit and farm. But if you're not going to land the last hits and get those kills on your carry to get that CP, it might actually be a better idea to just farm. Late game, however, you'll want to secure Raptors constantly. It'll be easy to do with just a tiny bit of lifesteal, gathering the CP lead as much as you can through this. Not to mention, you'll be able to 1v1 much more as well, given your late game power as a carry. Ideally, you want to take a team fight with less enemies to worry about, so catching someone out and removing them from play before a big team fight can be huge. You're the most important role in the fights, so don't be just sitting there killing jungle camps and farming when your team needs you. It's late game. You're the powerhouse, so use it before the enemy can catch up. Remind yourself to always check your positioning in teamfights. If you're able to keep dealing damage until the enemy carries in range to kill, that will be ideal. And finally, you are the best at killing structures like towers or inhibs. You murder them. So if your team are putting their lives on the line to secure that all-important inhib, you'll be expected to back them up and kill that tower. So do it. And my final tip of the day is important to everyone, no matter the role. Check the enemy comps and builds. If it's stun heavy, you're going to have to invest into escapes such as Blink Charm quicker, which sacrifices damage in the early game, sure, to make sure you survive to actually do damage. Or if you see the enemy don't have many ways to hold you down, that is the dream. You can get away with building more damage cards and punishing the enemy for their poor choices. But as always, consider what they are building and what characters they have before you make your choices. All right, that'll do for my general guide to Twin Blast. A solid build and important things to think about in each game that you're gonna dive into. I hope that helped. Let's see if I can get a proper gameplay breakdown for Twin Blast out soon, like my recent Severog video. Definitely check that out if you wanna learn the jungle role. Thanks for watching. If you've got any advice to share or questions to ask, feel free to leave it in the comments. See you next time.